Hi friends, I know that many people liked videos under the rubric Stealing from China and at the request of the audience, today there will be another video on this topic. So Stealing from China number 4. For those who don't know, I will say that all the videos in this series contain a complete description of the principle of operation of some device, which can be found in Chinese online stores. In fact, these are educational videos. All links to the videos from this category you can find in the description. We all know very well that Chinese online stores sell electronic kits for self-assembly. Of course, most of these designs weren't developed by the Chinese at all. Any radio amateur during everyday researches often needs to load some circuits to determine their output characteristics. As a load can be used a regular lamp, a resistor or a nichrome heating element. Those who study the power electronics often face with the problem of finding the right load. The load is necessary for checking the output characteristics of a power supply, whether it is homemade or industrial, and the load must be adjustable. The simplest solution to this problem is the use of rheostats as a load, but to find powerful rheostats is problematic. Moreover, their resistance is limited. Anyone who understands electronics knows what I mean. There is only one solution to the problem, electronic load. In the electronic load, all the power is allocated on the power elements, transistors. In fact, electronic loads can be made at any power and they are much more versatile than an ordinary rheostat. Professional laboratory electronic loads cost a lot of money. The Chinese, as always, offer countless analogs. The most powerful version of such a load of 300 watts is worth about $9. This is not a lot for a device that is comparable in importance to a laboratory power supply. But I prefer to make my own version. Finding the circuit of the device was not difficult. I repeatedly showed the load which, working exactly according to this principle, even made the device. Links to all videos can be found in the description. The second is also a powerful version due to the use of the LM324 operational amplifier chip, which consists of four separate elements. If you look closely at the circuit, it becomes immediately clear that it consists of four separate loads that are connected in parallel, so that the overall load capacity of the circuit is many times larger. This is the usual current stabilizer on a field effect transistor, which can easily be replaced by NPN bipolar transistors. Let's study the principle of operation of the circuit on the example of one block. The operational amplifier has two inputs, direct and inverse, and one output, which in this circuit controls a powerful N-channel field effect transistor. Here, a low impedance resistor is a current sensor. To operate the device, a low current power source of 12 to 15 volts is needed. It will power the operational amplifier. The operational amplifier aims to bring the voltage difference between its inputs to zero by changing the output voltage. When the power supply is connected to the load, there will be a voltage drop on the current sensor and greater current in the circuit will cause greater drop on the sensor. Thus, at the inputs of the operational amplifier, we get the voltage difference. The amplifier will try to compensate this difference by changing its output voltage, smoothly opening or closing the transistor. This leads to a decrease or increased transistor's channel resistance and therefore the current flowing in the circuit will also change. In the circuit, we also have a reference voltage source and a variable resistor, by rotating which we have the ability to forcibly change the voltage on one of the inputs of the operational amplifier, and then the above-mentioned process occurs. As a result, the current in the circuit changes. The load operates in a linear mode, in contrast to the pulse mode, in which the transistor is either fully open or closed. In this case, we can force the transistor to open as much as we need. In other words, we can smoothly change the resistance of its channel and therefore change the current in the circuit literally from 1 mA. It's important to note that the current value set by the variable resistor doesn't change depending on the input voltage. That is, the current is stabilized. 
In the circuit, we have four of these units. The reference voltage is generated from the same source, which means all four transistors will open evenly. As you noticed, I use the powerful FAT IRFP260. These are very good 45 amperes 300 watt transistors. In the circuit, four of such transistors, and in theory, such a load should dissipate up to 1200 watts. But alas, our circuit works in linear mode. No matter how powerful the transistor is, in the linear mode, everything is different. The power dissipation is limited by the transistor case. All power is released in the form of heat on the transistor, and it must have time to transfer this heat to the radiator. Therefore, even the coolest transistor in the linear mode isn't so cool. In this case, the maximum that the transistor in the TO247 case can dissipate is 75 watts of power. That's it. We are figured out with the theory. Now let's move on to the practice. The printed circuit board was developed in just two hours. The result is satisfying. And the layout is pretty good. After a detailed correction, perhaps I will order a trial batch of 10 pieces at the GLC plant. You can do the same. The prices of the company are the most affordable, only $2 for 10 boards. In quality, I was convinced personally, having visited the company's factory. Just upload the Gerber file of the board at company's website and in just 24 hours, your order will be completed. The boards can be of any complexity and size. Who is interested will find links to the videos and to the company's website in the description. I know that many people like to look at the process of soldering, but it's actually very inconvenient to solder under the camera. I honestly tried to shoot the whole process, but I got tired on halfway and I turned off the camera. The finished board should be tinned, the power pads should be reinforced with a single core copper wire, and all should be poured with a solder to minimize losses on the resistance of conductors. The board provides prints for the installation of transistors in the TO247 and TO220 packages. In the case of using the TO220, you need to remember the maximum that they are capable of is a modest 40 watts of power in linear mode. It is advisable to use transistors with a drain source voltage from 70 to 200 volts, which will make it possible to use our load to test relatively high voltage power supplies. Current sensors are 5 watt low impedance resistors from 0.1 to 0.22 ohms. Operational amplifier is preferably to install on the mounting panel. For a more accurate adjustment of the current, one more variable resistor of low resistance is added. The first performs a coarse adjustment and the second one smooth. Don't forget precautions. The load doesn't have protection, so you need to use it wisely. For example, if there are 50 volts transistors in the load, then it is forbidden to connect test power sources with a voltage higher than 45 volts. You must have a small margin. I don't recommend setting the value of current more than 20 amperes if the transistors are in the TO247 package and 10 to 12 amperes in the case of the TO220 package. Perhaps the most important point is not to exceed the permissible power, for example, 300 watts if used TO247 package. For this, I advise you to build a wattmeter into the load in order to monitor the power dissipation and not to exceed the maximum value. I strongly recommend using transistors from one batch to minimize the difference of characteristics. About cooling. I hope everyone understands that 300 watts of power will go to heat transistors. This is like a 300 watt heater. If the heat isn't effectively removed, the transistors will fail. Therefore, the transistors are mounted on a massive one-piece radiator. The place of contact between the transistor and the radiator must be thoroughly cleaned, degreased and polished. Even small bumps in our case can spoil everything. If you decide to apply the thermal paste, then make it a thin layer and use a good thermal paste. No need to use thermal pads or to isolate the transistor substrate from the radiator. All these effects the heat transfer.
Well, now let's check the work of our load. We will load my power supply, which gives a maximum of 30 volts at a current of up to 7 amperes. That is, the output power is about 210 watts. In the load, I installed three transistors instead of four, so we can't get all 300 watts of power. It's too risky. And the power supply itself will not give more than 210 watts. Here you can notice a 12 volt battery. In this case, it's only for powering the operational amplifier. Gradually increase the current and reach the desired level of 30 volts 7 amperes. Everything works fine. Load sustained despite the fact that I have transistors from different batches and rather dubious. But apparently they are original, if don't burst it at once. Such a load can be used to check the power of computer power supplies as well as to discharge batteries to measure their capacity. In general, a radio amateur will appreciate the benefits of electronic loading. In the future, this board will surely be installed in the box. The device is really useful in the radio amateur laboratory and the power can be increased to at least 1000 watts by connecting several such boards in parallel. A 600 watt load circuit is now on your screens. In the description below this video, you will find an archive of the project with a circuit and a printed circuit board. Also, there are links to the kits for self-assembly of electronic loads for different capacities and to other useful information. Friends, please don't forget to rate this video and subscribe to our group of electronics. Now I have to say goodbye until we meet again. With you as always was Kassian TV.